First of all, I want to thank STOA for hosting this important summit. For nearly four decades now, your panel has played a crucial role in bridging the gap between science and politics. And it helped to bring the best scientific minds into the heart of the European policy making. And I'm delighted to see so many of you from the scientific community, both here today and online, because we want to hear from you. We know that incredible innovations are happening across Europe. For example, pioneers in research finding new carbon capture techniques literally turning our CO2 emissions into stone. Or scientists using music to track emotional reactions to test consciousness of coma patients. Or companies developing fusion technologies that bring the promise of infinite, clean, and reliable energy to Europe. We are a continent teeming with innovation. And these breakthroughs are grounded in fundamental research, in the freedom of science. We can see it through history, you know it from Copernicus to Marie Curie. Progress happens when scientists are free to follow their curiosity, to follow the evidence even when it leads to unexpected or inconvenient directions. So when some of the most successful scientific programs ever are cut in one part of the world, it affects all of us. From vital vaccination research to projects looking at how to develop cleaner fuels, we see these days that science is under threat. And often for reasons that have nothing to do with research. And yet we all know that the freedom of science is essential. I don't need to tell you that science needs the freedom of doubt, like air for breathing. I don't have to tell you that only those who allow doubts discover new things. Those who are certain they know everything rob the flame of knowledge of its oxygen. Without scientific freedom, humanity stands still. Without scientific freedom, we would still believe that the Earth is the center of the universe. Without scientific freedom, Neil Armstrong would have never set his boots on the moon dust. Freedom of science is more important than ever to address the challenges we face, from climate change to the prevention of the next pandemic, from risks and opportunities of genetic engineering to risks and opportunities of artificial intelligence. And I want to be very clear. Europe will always remain the home of scientific freedom. Europe will always choose science. You can rely on that. And for me, this is not only a moral imperative. It is also the smartest choice, because scientific discovery powers prosperity. We must make Europe the best place in the world to pursue science, not only for fundamental research, but through the entire life cycle of innovation, from the university laboratory to world-leading unicorns. We must ensure that scientists and entrepreneurs both choose Europe. So let me focus on three areas where we are making that happen. First is funding, second is talent, and the third point is bridging the gap from research to commercial success. On funding, 
Groundbreaking science requires stable and sustained investment, without any question. And as you said already before, here in Europe, we are already a global leader. Horizon Europe is the world's largest international research program with a budget of 93 billion euros. Over the past 40 years, our support has helped fund 33 Nobel Prize winners, and it continues today. So take, for example, the innovative ways to target cancer cells, or to understand how marine organisms impact climate change or to build the next generation of quantum computers, these are not just scientific endeavors. They are proof of the unparalleled return on investment that science offers. And indeed, this is why Horizon Europe will stay a self-standing program in our next seven-year budget. Because we can be so proud that Horizon Europe is an outstanding brand, one that researchers around the world want to be part of. And we will go further. We will launch a new competitiveness fund. It will support the entire innovation life cycle. And it will help turn breakthrough discoveries into the technologies of tomorrow. And that leads me to my second point, talents. We want Europe to be the best place for researchers, both for scientists already here in Europe and to attract the best and brightest from around the world to make sure that they choose Europe. We already have an attractive offer. We have stable, reliable and sustained investment. We have freedom of science. You choose what you are working on. We have excellent facilities, but we are making our pull now stronger. We have announced a new 500 million euro package for 2025 to 2027, and we are now pooling our financial resources with our member states and regions, and together we will raise billions of euros in the coming years to offer top researchers the best possible conditions. It is a true Team Europe effort that we are doing here. We are, for example, creating a new seven-year super grant to provide longer-term stability for top researchers, and we are doubling the additional funding that we offer to researchers with an ERC grant, who relocate to Europe. We are also making it easier to link institutions to international researchers so that you can access the talent that you need. Because bringing the best of the world to Europe helps bring out the best in Europe. And finally, my third point, we're working to bridge the gap from research to commercial success. We all know the situation. We want more of your groundbreaking discoveries to benefit society at a large. And this can also create a virtuous cycle, one where the commercial success of the scientific ideas gets back to you as new funding as feedback and, of course, as fresh data, helping to then drive the next breakthrough cycle. And for this reason, we launched last week our startup and scale-up strategy. It helps to fast-track the journey from the lab to the market. We know that this is the most challenging point for us today, really to have from the lab to the market a seamless process from scientific breakthrough to transformative business, it must be one line. 
The strategy outlines how we can remove very important regulatory gaps and barriers. You know how much red tape you are partially facing. The strategy helps close the fun funding gaps that we have without any doubt. And the strategy will help to unlock venture capital for high-risk, high-tech scale-ups. Our European Innovation Council is already supporting startups, as you know, with grants and equity investment of up to 30 million euros. But here, too, we are convinced that more is needed. So we will expand the Council's role and simplify its rules so that the Council can focus on challenge-driven funding for high-risk innovations. And we will also launch, we call it an initiative, Lab to Unicorn. This initiative, Lab to Unicorn, aims to accelerate the commercialization of research. This will benefit our economies, of course, without any doubt, through new innovations and ideas coming to the market. But of course, it will also benefit the researchers and institutes in making groundbreaking discoveries. The initiative will help to close licensing and equity agreements because we know that if we want Europe to be the best place in the world for science, we need a seamless innovation flow from research to innovation to successful startups and global scale-ups. So, ladies and gentlemen, my message is all of us here today have a role to play. For the Commission, that means creating a simpler and faster environment so science can flourish, be it through investment or be it through infrastructure that is necessary, or by defending the freedom of science that we all depend on. This will help scientists and innovators to do what they do best, to continue delivering cutting-edge research and innovation, and to work together so that these breakthroughs grow into globally successful products and companies. For STOA and the Parliament, it is to continue to make the case for European science and innovation. You're good at that, I know that. Both this House and, of course, you have to make this case across your constituencies. I know by experience, you're pressing the Commission, that is good. So continue to do so. We want to make sure that we have the world's most welcoming environment for science and innovation. It has to be a conducive environment. We want to ensure that the brightest minds and the boldest entrepreneurs choose Europe. This is our mission. Thank you very much for the attention and long live Europe. Thank you.